Thank you for visiting this channel. This is Timely Word and Prayer for Day 228. Day 228. This is the fourth day of the 33rd week of the year. Um, this day is August 15 in a leap year and August 16 in a clear year. So <clears throat> we trust God that um, today we're going to receive the word of the Lord. Hear what God has in mind. The book of the book of Micah is is the thirty third book of the Bible, and the thirty third it's it's guiding light for the thirty third week. Micah is guiding light for the thirty third week, and Micah is saying fire 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 there is fire on the mountain the lord is coming because of transgression there is a fiery visitation that is coming that's what micah is saying and this is a warning to all who are going through the 33 season whether the 33 year or 33 seven years or people who are just in 33 week whatever 33 micah is a guiding light to say you need to watch 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 fire is coming watch watch and we see uh, modern day proofs of it that in in uh, <laughs> in in 1933, a man who set the world ablaze, Hitler, became the Chancellor of Germany, and he was he was the trigger that sparked off the Second World War. And we also see that in the season of the 33rd President of the United States, Harry S. Truman, that's when the atomic bomb was used. In the very first year of his being in office, the atomic bomb was used against Japan, uh, the cities of Japan, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And um, we also see that at the beginning of the 33rd, seven years of the United States, that's 2021, that's when the World Trade Center terrorists bombed, the World Trade Center destroyed lives and destroyed property, what billions. So we, we must pay attention to what uh, Micah is saying and apply it to our lives even in this week. Now, uh, this fourth day of the 33rd week, you know, has pattern in the fourth day of creation. The fourth day of creation, that's the midpoint in the week, that's the bridge season in the week. That's the place from where we go to the other side of the week. You know, in every seven, the fourth is the midpoint, the fourth is the middle. On this side you have three, on this side you have three. On the on the last on the on the last three days of the seven of the week of creation, God blessed. He blessed in, in fifth on the fifth day, blessed on the sixth day, and blessed on the sixth day. So when we come into the fourth day, it's like we are about to move into the blessing side of the week. So this is a bridge season. This is also is a midpoint. And I like to call it a time of stretching for promotion. It's a time of stretching for promotion. It's a time when people must take decisions that make a difference. Make, take decisions that will turn things around. It's a time of pressure, but that's when people take decisions and say, no. In Esther chapter 4, Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Let whatever happen. In Acts chapter 4, the disciple says, no, we can't obey you and disobey God. We cannot. I'm ready for whatever. Let whatever happen. I'm standing, standing for God. So the enemy comes with pressure, pressure, pressure to push you to the other side. Satan came after Jesus in the fourth chapter of Luke and the fourth chapter of Matthew said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to become bread. And Jesus said, no way. i come a long way already. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So in this season, the enemy comes to with fear. He comes with deception. He comes with confusion and he comes with stumbling. 
It comes with stumbling. So, but we must stand our ground, must stand our ground, and not give room to any of those tricks of the enemy. So let's go to the fourth day of creation narrative and see what the Lord has for us there, because that's our guiding light for what, you know, for the fourth day. The fourth day has a pattern in the fourth day of creation narrative, also has a pattern in the fourth book of the Bible, and in the fourth chapters of the Bible, that's the fourth day. You know, when you look at the fourth book of the Bible, that's where Israel was tested to breaking point. Israel was tested to breaking point. Israel saw war, saw all kinds of things, saw witchcraft, saw everything. Eventually, what broke the strength of the people was when the reports came and they said there were giants. And the people cried and said, no, we don't want to go again. The Lord was displeased with them. And many who left Egypt in the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible, perished in the second, in the fourth book of the Bible. Not because, you know, of any, not because their enemy was too strong, but because they began to believe less in their God who delivered them from Egyptian bondage. They began to believe less in God. They began to believe less in God. So, let's go to, so God gives, you know, in the fourth season, remember, on the first day of creation, God said, let there be light. Now, on the fourth day of creation, God said, let there be lights. Why that? Let there be light and let there be lights. Of course, we know the difference between the two lights. The first light was singular, let there be light. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. On the fourth day, say, let there be lights, luminaries, plural. Let there be lights, light holders, or lamp holders, you know, light holders, luminaries. The, in the fourth season, the fourth season is a fight back season for darkness. The fourth season is a fight back season for darkness. That's why when you read many fourth chapters of the Bible, you don't have very sweet stories there. Either you see the adversary coming, the persecution is coming, something is coming, you know, there's one negative story or one thing after another. There's pain, there's pressure, there's persecution in the fourth chapters because it's a fight back season for darkness. It's a time of stretching for promotion. The enemy is always going to attack in the fourth season. Jesus and his disciples were on a boat in Mark chapter 4. A storm hit. A storm rose against them, but Jesus rebuked the wind. So, that is what um, this day is about. So on the fourth day of creation, God made luminaries. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and so and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the lights from the darkness and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the first day. The light that God gave on the fourth day of creation, they were all guiding light. Yet yeah, they give light, they shall be for seasons. They were to be for seasons. They were to divide the day from night you know, so that there is no confusion. These are all guiding lights. Guiding lights. When Jesus was born, it was a star that led to where, you know, the baby was. They were all guiding lights. Before, you know, we had clocks and calendar, the sun and the moon helped people to know there's a new month. Uh, till today, that's still what some people use, you know. 
they use the moon. They, they depend on the moon to let them know when a new, a new month has come. And, um, you know, the sun to tell you when it's daybreak and when the, moon, the day is about to change, when there is sunset. So these are guiding lights. Guiding lights. What do they mean? What do they mean for us? Guiding light that God wants to guide you in the fourth season because the plan of the kingdom of darkness is for darkness to overtake you. So God is giving guiding light, guiding light by his word, guiding light by his spirit, and guiding light by counsel. So God has guiding lights for us on this day. So that's the will of God, that this day you will not be overcome by fear, you will not be overcome by confusion. Deception will not over, you know, you will not be overtaken or overcome by deception and you will have no reason to stumble. This is a day to stand in faith and don't give room to fear. Don't give room to the devil. That's what Ephesians chapter 4 says. Say neither give room to the devil. Don't give room to the devil. So that's um, what we must put to heart this day. So we're going to look at the fourth division or the fourth chapter of the 33rd book of the Bible and see how it applies to us um, today. So we go to Micah, uh, Micah and chapter 4. Micah and chapter 4. Father, we just thank you. Your word is true. Micah chapter 4. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the lost house shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mount of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall the law shall go forth, and the word from, from Jerusalem. Now, from chapter 1, we've been reading about war. <laughs> you know, God is going to judge, God is going to do this, God is going to do that you know, pointing at the people's sin and all that. Now, in chapter 4, everything changes. He now begins to speak about how, you know, Mount Zion shall become, you know, a city on a hill, and people will flock there. People will flock there. Something is changing. Something is changing. People will go to learn. Remember, guiding light. Zion will become a guiding light for the nations. He said, let us go to the house of God, the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path. Now, what this means is that today, God wants you to be a light. God wants you to be the guiding light. God wants to put you in a place where you can be light. And that is the reason you must not cooperate with darkness, lest you become darkness to the people. God wants to set you up as a model, model, model. He wants you to be a model. That's why God allows people to go through things they go through in the fourth season, because it's a season of stretching for promotion. Stretching. That you become a reference for and say, can't you see what that person did? Can't you see how Jesus overcame temptation? Can't you see what Esther did? Can't you see what the apostles said in the Acts of Apostles chapter 4? You become a reference point. It's a season of stretching that makes you a reference point. He said, come, let us go to the mountain. He will teach us. He said, for out of Zion, the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples to divide. But he said, on the day of creation, this light 
they will divide between the day and the night and rebuke strong nations afar off. They shall bear their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nations, neither shall they learn war anymore. But everyone shall sit under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. When God is saying things like this, <laughs> when God is saying things like this, we need to <laughs> become a lot more careful. Because when God begins to speak peace, the enemy has fire somewhere. But at least this is, gives us an idea what God has in mind for this fourth season. None shall make them afraid. I pray that nothing will make you afraid this way. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken for all the people. Walk each in the name of his God. But we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. In that day, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame. I will gather the outcasts and those whom I have afflicted. I will make the lame a remnant and the outcasts a strong nation. So the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on, even forever. And you, O, Lord, o tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come. Even the former dominion shall come the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Now, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in your midst? Has your counselor perished? For pangs have seized you like a woman in labor, be in pain and labor to bring forth. That's what the fourth season is. So when you see trials and see pain in the, in the fourth season, is a season to you know, travel to bring forth like a woman in bed pangs. For now you shall go forth from the city, you shall dwell in the field, and Babylon shall go, shall go. There you shall be delivered. There the Lord will redeem you from the land of your enemies. He didn't say you won't go to Babylon, you're going to go there. So sometimes God allows people to go into, into the fourth season becomes a spiritual hot season. People go through trials, people go through pains, and you know, through pressures, and it's all for good because God is fashioning something out of them. Now also many nations have gathered together against you who say, let the Lord be, def let, let her be defied and let her eye look upon Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. They do not know, nor do they understand his counsel, for he will gather them like Sheeps for the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make you, I will make your horn iron, and I will make your hoops bronze. You shall beat in pieces many peoples. I will consecrate their grain, their gain to the Lord, and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. The time of pressure, a time of stretching for blessing. So at the beginning, everything sounded okay because God speaks the end from the beginning. But you know, at the later end, he began to talk about the troubles that the people are going to go through. I said, don't worry. They will think they got you, not knowing that, but they do not know the counsel of the Lord. He said, but they do not know the thoughts of the Lord, nor do they understand his counsel. For he will gather them like sheep to the threshing floor. So when the enemy comes against you in the fourth season, it is that the enemy might be crushed. It's not against you. The storm that came against Jesus and his disciples in Mark chapter 4 did not come to destroy them. It came to glorify God. When Israel saw the giants in the fourth book of the Bible, it was not to make them stop their journey. It was to fire them up like Caleb and Joshua to say, we are able to go. So don't let anything stop you today. Don't let any pressure, don't let any intimidation. Today, you must not give room to confusion. You must not give room to fear. You must not give room to deception. You must not give room to discouragement or anything that causes people to stumble. This day is a day of determination. A day to say, when I get to the terminus, I will open it up so that my journey can continue. I pray that the Lord will bless you today. That this 
day two to eight will be a blessing in your life. It will be a day of preparation to cross to the other side and God will glorify in your life. Help us share this word and send it abroad. Send it to your friends, send it to family members. Share the word and get them to hear what the Lord is saying. Amen. The Lord bless you and give you a very blessed and pleasant day. In Jesus' name, amen.